Hi, my name is Chris Mitchell. I'm the CEO of Health Workforce Queensland. It's my pleasure to bring to you the State of the Nation report, which provides an outline of the number of reports and developments which have occurred during the year. Having said that, at the time of producing this for you, uh, it's clear that it's been a, an Australian a government has changed. It's been a federal election, and a number of these reports will need to be re reconsidered in light of that. In the 2022-2023 budget, the federal government announced an investment of $632.8 million to support the implementation of the primary health care 10-year plan. This includes $291 million toward the Stronger Rural Health Strategy, $99.3 million toward the Rural Medical Education uh, Initiatives, and $56 million towards access to after-hours care uh, services. In the 2022 federal election campaign, the Australian Labor Party announced $25 million to create 20 additional medical student placements in James Cook University, $146 million to boost the rural doctors and allied health workforce, and $970 million toward the infrastructure upgrades in general practice clinics to improve infection control and ventilation systems and upgrading IT systems to support telehealth as well as the upskilling of staff. The primary health care 10-year plan is underpinned by a quadruple aim. The plan attempts to support patient-centred continuity of care through a proposed system of voluntary patient registration through general practice. It proposes funding reforms over time to support outcome-focused, multidisciplinary care and to address the challenges faced by older Australians, people in remote and rural communities, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and people with disability and other population cohorts who face barriers to accessing appropriate care. A suite of sector and profession specific workforce strategies are either under development or have been released in support of the primary healthcare 10 year plan. These workforce plans are also released, include the NDIS workforce plan to 2021 to 2025, the National Medical Workforce Strategy 2021 to 2031, a matter of care, the Australian's aged care workforce strategy from June 2018, the National and Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander uh, Health Workforce Strategic Framework and the Implementation Plan from 2021 to 2031. Workforce plans are also under development, uh, include the National Nursing Strategy and the National Mental Health Workforce Strategy. The care and support sector is one of Australia's largest and fastest growing sectors. The NDIS National Workforce Plan 2021 to 2025 outlines the Australian government's commitment to work with NDIS participants, industry and other stakeholders to grow a responsive and capable workforce for the NDIS. The workforce plan aims to address the challenges of care and support workforce through three key aims. One, attracting new workforce through strengthened pathways and promoting the benefits of care and support sector. Two, strengthening training and support for the NDIS workforce. And three, reducing red tape and encouraging innovative service models. The National Medical Workforce Strategy 2021 to 2031 was released in December 2021. It identifies achievable practical actions to build a sustainable, highly trained medical workforce, including addressing workforce maldistribution. The five priority areas are one, collaborate on planning and design, two, rebalance supply and distribution, three, reform the training pathway, four, build generalist capability of medical workforce, and five, flexible and responsive medical workforce. The aged care workforce strategy released in March 2022 focuses on the nursing, allied health and personal care workforce. The strategy sets out 14 actions for industry to change attitude to caring, attract and retain skilled age workforce, and ensure that workforce can meet aged care needs now and into the future. The Australian Government is developing a nurse practitioner 10-year plan to describe a set of actions that can address nurse practitioner workforce issues, enhance the delivery of nursing care to the Australian community, the consultation plan closed in December 2021 and received a total of 496 responses. All respondents agreed that there were benefits for, from an expansion of the nurse practitioner model of care into various sectors, social groups and geographical locations. 
specific ideas to promote the nurse practitioner workforce in regional, rural and remote areas focused on increasing jobs, training opportunities through financial incentives, scholarships, bonded nurse practitioner roles and improving access to MBS and PBS rates. The National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Workforce Strategic Framework and Implementation Plan has two parts. The National Workforce Plan, Visions, Objectives and Targets, and the Strategic Framework and Implementation Plan. The plans have six strategic directions that plan as a target of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to represent 4.3% of the national health workforce by 2031. The interim report for the Federal Senate inquiry into the provision of general practice and related primary health care services to outer metropolitan rural and regional Australians was published in April 2022. The interim report rec provides nine recommendations, including a recommendation to further investigate the provision and distribution of general practice in rural and regional Australia. Also recommended for review is the modified Monash model alongside the development of benchmarks for the optimal distribution of primary health care professionals and a review of primary care components of medical education curriculum. The Australian General Practice Training Program will transition to the GP colleges from February the 1st, 2023 in a professional led training approach. This move will provide general practice with a nationally consistent approach similar to other medical specialty colleges. Set to commence in February 2023, the first selection intake closed in April 2022. A second intake to the program will be undertaken in August 2022. The Queensland Parliamentary Inquiry into the provision of primary, allied health and private health care, aged care and NDIS care services and its impact on the Queensland public health system found that failure in the provision of primary, aged and NDIS care led to the reliance on a stretched public health system, particularly in rural and remote areas. 42.4% of Queensland ED presentations could have been handled by GP. The cost of the non-urgent ED pres presentations was calculated at $540 versus the cost of a GP consultation of $111.50. The inquiry made 40 recommendations addressing changes to funding, incentives, training and increased cooperation for planning. The implementation of Queensland's Making Tracks Together Health Equity Framework continues in 2022. Making Tracks Together outlines the strategic framework to drive health equity, eliminate institutional racism across the public health system and achieve life expectancy parity for First Nations people by 2031. A cornerstone of this important agenda is legislative requirements passed by the Queensland Parliament in 2020 for hospital health services to co-develop and co-implement health equity strategies for the 2022 to 2025 period. The four Queensland rural PHNs have released their triennial health needs assessment. The health needs assessments inform commissioning and set regional priorities for local primary health care service delivery. In the 2022-2023 federal budget, $42.7 million was provided to every PHN to deploy community suicide prevention and improve mental health services, as well as $56 million to support the coordination of after hours care. According to the Health Workforce Queensland's 2021 minimum data set, which was released in May 2022, there was a net gain of 46 medical practitioners in rural and remote Queensland between November 2020 and November 2021. Since 2005, the average self-reported total hours worked by medical practitioners has decreased by almost seven hours. The proportion of female practitioners working in remote, rural and regional locations increased from 36.7% in 2010 to 44.9% in 2021. Approximately 20% of medical practitioners working in remote and very remote Queensland self-reported the intention to remain at their current location for less than 12 months. The Health Workforce Queensland Minimum Data Set Report is available on our website and I recommend it for your reading. 